Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fully Supported. Today we're talking about why pre-supported STLs kind of don't work. Anyway, let me change up my printer real quick and we'll just go ahead and jump right into this. We're looking at some pre-supported files from Cripple God Foundry and they are, for the most part, very well done. There are a couple of errors that I found in some of their files from time to time. And one of the reasons why I'm using them as an example is because their pre-supported work is actually really good. So usually what you get is you get a lychee slicer file and you get a STL file that's been pre-supported for you. Now the biggest issue I have is with static pre-supported STL files. Most cases you're still going to find islands and you don't have a way to edit the structure of support that's already there, so you really kind of have to work around the structure that's already there if that's what you're working with. So, for example, if you're working in G2Box, you don't have Lychee Slicer, you get a company that provides you with an STL and a Lychee Slicer scene, your best bet is going to be go with the STL. Um, in that case, you're going to want to validate and go layer by layer until you can figure out whether or not you have any issues there with any islands. Um, because that's going to be the number one thing that you're going to find between uh, pre-supported files and, you know, bringing them from where you got them and into your printer environment. And one of the things that I'm finding is that no matter what you try, your printer environment changing that, um, you're going to find, uh, you know, there's going to be more islands, there's going to be um, uh, a difference there at each layer height as well. So you have to kind of look at that when you look at pre-supported files. And this is why I say we need to kind of relook and rethink the way that we look at pre-supported STLs. When you get a, an STL that's been pre-supported and this is the only option you have and you want to use it, my advice to you is if you use Leachy, if you use Leachy Slicer, which I highly advise, go ahead and run the island, uh, the island check on it. See what it finds. F uh, secure any of the islands that it finds and then go ahead and run that print. Guarantee you it's going to be 99.9% .9 better than if you tried to do it without that um, beforehand. And I think the important point there is you really need to just make sure that you just go and look for the islands that you um, that might have been missed. Or again, these aren't even islands that might have been missed. This is simply could be a change of one resolution environment to another resolution environment having to do with both the screen size and resolution to go along with it. So I think that's an important note and it's something that doesn't really get discussed too often. A lot of guys hand out pre-supported STLs. That's the majority of it. We don't often get the chance to see the Chi2 box or the Lechi Slicer files. And so we're kind of going along the, the lines of, you know, this is all we have. So if you're like me, you work with Lechi Slicer exclusively, uh, and this is what you do, you're, you're okay with getting an LYS file or an LYT, and you can work with that as long as you have the STL files to go along with them. You can and you can use them. You don't have to use them. You can do your own thing. You can edit them, and that's the great thing about being able to have an LYS file or like like she slicer scene is that you can edit it. Working with an STL file, the static file, there's nothing you can do there. Um, if you have to repair that, um, there's a chance the repair could actually mess with supports. So, and I've seen some cases where you have to import the whole file and you have to run a repair on it and you're just crossing your fingers that that was actually good. Now, I don't run pre-supported anything anymore, but when I started in this and I started messing around with resin printing, I definitely did mess around with some pre-supported STLs from time to time. But again, you know, even, even a, a lychee slicer scene is not going to be perfect. Here, I'll show you an example. Look at these little islands that are floating in the middle of nothing. That actually shouldn't be there. This is another weird problem that you will get with pre-supported files in general. And this has to do with just the, ge the basic geometry of the file. Now, to fix this, you actually need to open up the STL file in a program like Microsoft 3D Builder or Blender or Mesh Mixer. And you need to actually do a real mesh repair on the file. In 3D Build, it's very simple. You simply import the file, you click the repair box in the lower right-hand corner, and you go ahead and let it run its process. This can take a little bit of time depending on how many things it has to repair in the file, and then from there, you go ahead and save that file, and then you're gonna jump back into your lychee slicer scene, where you're going to go back to your layout tab, you're gonna go back to the model itself, and choose the update option from the object editor in the upper right-hand corner. That is going to update the STL file so that way what you're looking at is a newer version of the file that has now been repaired in the application 
that you repaired it in. Uh, and this will, in fact, get rid of those weird little floating islands. I usually suspect that this is leftover information from either, you know, old Boolean information that's been left over from the model when it was created, or maybe it has something to do with the way that the model's blocked, and there's some issues there with that. I have no idea specifically, but I do know that this has happened to me before, and I know that this is a very good way to fix it, and pretty much every time we'll, we'll get you where you want to be. Now, you will notice that we still have islands here, so we still need to fix that. And then we'll go ahead and support all those islands, and we'll move ahead. And I'll show you exactly what happens once we change the resolution of the printer and change the printer itself. So we're going to move over to the Saturn II, which is a bigger resolution printer than the X2. Uh, and you'll see here, I'll run my island search again, and that um, will edit out the timing on that because those take a while on some of these larger objects. And you will see that this will find additional islands. And it's crazy because I think eventually you'll run uh, into the, the point where you, it won't. Um, because you're going to run into enough environments that are going to be similar screen size, resolution type, etc. So I think eventually you're going to run into a point where you're like, all right, I, there's no more islands here for this to fix. Um, so we're not going to go any further with this. But you can see... Uh, what some of the things that, that you'll want to look for is weird broken geometry. Um, you know, in this case, I have an island here that it says I it, that's there, but I can't actually see it, and I can't identify it to fix it. Now, it might be one of those weird islands that somehow is, is like inside, inside these little middle layers that do kind of happen. So that is possible. I have had that happen before. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on to um, some different models so I can show you some different examples there as well and we can take a look at that. Alright, these are some models from the Printed Obsession. So these are completely different group of artists, uh, or sorry, rather artist. And I believe they are supported by Atlas 3DSS. Very well done. I don't usually have any problems with their supporting work. Sometimes I go in and finesse my own little things, but again, we have an example. We have an STL file, and then we have our lychee slicer scene. So I'm going to go ahead and just run an island search on both at the same time, because there's really no harm to it. These are kind of small anyway. This won't take very long, but you're going to see all I've done is taken their pre-support file, bring it into my environment, load those assets, and then boom. Immediately we're going to find some islands. And again, this is expected. Changing environment from one uh, printer to another, changing resolution from one printer to another will definitely find islands. And then, of course, I do advise that you go up and down your layer heights and try to uh, see if you can find some additional islands at the lower um, layer heights. And this is that's a helpful way of, for, for you to catch some additional islands regardless. Um, just make sure you don't over support the islands because those can be the, some of the most fragile bits sometimes since they're the parts that are hanging off. Now for the most part everything there is pretty well supported. There are a couple little islands that, that are missed um, but we can support those and then I will give you an example here again. Um, once we do that uh, simply changing resolution from one type of printer to another again will find uh, more issues, more islands, etc. So I think my my thought process is here is that I'm not against STL files. I'm not. Um, I think there's a way to get them to a point where you will actually catch all the islands, but I think it takes a lot of extra work to get there. One of the things that I've started putting into my workflow is I will, even if I don't own the printers, I'll actually load up printers that have much, much, much higher resolutions than the systems I own, all the way up to 12K if I can. Um, and I will literally do an island search at that super high resolution. I'll even take the layer height all the way down as low as it can handle. And then, you know, you, you'd be amazed. Once you do that, though, I think at a point, you, like I said, you really are going to catch them all. No, not to be punny and make it sound like Pokemon or anything, but you are going to catch them all. You will eventually catch every island. You will eventually catch all the possible bits that these different systems are going to pick up on. Except for maybe the stray, stray one or two 
that might be completely different. And I honestly can't see that being too often or too frequent the case. So I think for the most part, you'll probably be good if you do and repeat the process to which I'm talking about here. And that is literally just go into different environments, go into your slicer. You know, if you're like me and you use Leechy exclusively, uh, go into your printer settings, add all a bunch of printers, go and add like a frozen 8K, uh, you know, add your M M5S 12K, add a bunch of printers, add a DLP in there. Um, and then give things a try. You'll, you'll be, you're going to be like, oh, wow, look at that. That has islands. It's not that you missed them. It's not that the islands were missed. This has everything to do with the difference of printer and the way that the different screens and resolutions affect the way that the islands will appear according to the slice. And this is just something that I have repeatedly just tried over and over again with different models, different, different providers, different artists, all have the same results. So this is not, this is not me kicking anybody saying you're bad at your job because guys, this is hard. This is, it's tedious stuff and I get it. I do it too. There's nothing easy about it and there's nothing fun about it some days. But at the same time, I feel like there is something we can do to help eliminate some of these issues. And I think that has a lot to do with being able to go into these different environments, look at the printer setups in these different environments, and then, you know, simply go, okay, this is where it needs to be here. This is where it needs to be here. This is where it needs to be here. And continue on, you know, until you catch every possible island that you can catch. And yes, eventually you are going to reach that level where you're like, all right, I got, I got them. There's nothing else that could possibly be. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there still will be a printer out there that's going to, you're going to load it up. It's going to be like, oh, I fell on an island. If that happens, let me know. <laughs> Put some comments down below, folks. Let me, let me know what y'all think. Because to be honest, I don't think I'm grasping at straws. This is the second episode I've discussed this. The first time we were talking about orientation and moving things around. This time we're talking about not even moving things around, not changing orientation, nothing. The object is literally sitting there in the middle of the platform where it was loaded. You just go and change the printer setting to whatever setting you're going to change. And then all of a sudden you find islands. Again, this is expected when you're going from one resolution to another. But how do we make this work for STL files across the board? I think that's more the question. So when you're working with an STL file, remember, do your island check, validate the, layer, the layers and the slices, make sure it's good. Don't simply trust. If you're working with a lychee slicer file, again, you're going to want to do your islands check because your resolution, your printer settings are always going to be a little different than someone else's. And I think that always is going to make a difference in what your, um, your, island, reflect, your island search is going to reflect. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I hope this was interesting, exposing, educational, and all that fun stuff. And I really appreciate all the love the channel is receiving. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you all real soon. Take care.